I'm at the Boscombe Children's Centre in Bournemouth, where every Tuesday, young mothers from the area gather. Busy with their kids, they're locked in their own sweet world, oblivious to the controversy surrounding them. I break the spell, asking them mundane questions like whether they received any sort of sex education in school. Suddenly, they're transformed from nurturing mothers to giggly schoolgirls. Um... I had like sex education when I was at school school, but I don't think I really went. <laughs> um, no, as I said, I didn't go to secondary school, so I didn't get any of that. Um, but I mean, my mum's always been very vocal about it, and I've got two older sisters who are both on birth control, so I'm very informed about it. And just sometimes it's difficult to take the advice, and I just like made a mistake and got something to get out of it, I guess. So. Do you have any kind of sex education uh, where you got? Yeah, we, uh, we did. I think it's like two lessons about properly sex education, like the sex part of it, but that was about it. Was it very helpful? It was, but it didn't sort of go straight in. <laughs> Frankie Warner, the family support worker for the centre, says that they have a sexual health team coming often to educate the girls. They need to know what's out there, what's available, you know, that they should be taking care of themselves as regards to protecting themselves from becoming pregnant again. As a nation that has the second highest teenage pregnancy rate in the Western world, it's time we take a closer look at our existing sex and relationship education. Shreshtha Trivedi, reporting.